make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. After the defeat of the evil wizard Bobby and the demon king Deborah, peace was finally restored on Earth. Unfortunately, since Majin Buu was never fully revived and he was hatched, this means that there's no good Buu or there's no Oob. So Goku would never have another student, but we'll dive into that later. Mr. Satan would also not be as popular as he originally was because of Majin Buu's not there for him to keep on winning. But in the end, he's still absurdly popular anyway, so it's not really going to change anything. So Mr. Satan is still the champion of the world. Peace would be restored for years, until far off a purple cat would then awaken. This was Lord Beerus. Now mind you here, Beerus has awoken as he's felt this power multiple times during his slumber, a power that he's never felt before. Beast knows all about it, but he's kept quiet. Beerus would then awaken fully and eat his normal meal. He would then be speaking to Whis but he had a premonition of a god, a being who can rival him. Whis would then begin sweating a little bit as Beerus would wonder what it, what, what's his problem. Whis would then tell him that there's a mortal that power could even surpass his own. This would then shock Beerus as that's impossible, he's an angel. No mortal can surpass an angel, let alone a god of destruction. That, that's impossible. We states, but anything is possible, my lord. Unfortunately, this mortal has the potential to surpass me and anyone else that I've even known. His power is even close to matching yours. The more he fights, the stronger he gets. This would shock Beerus completely, as he needs to see the Saiyan. There's no way that a Saiyan is that powerful. There's just impossibility. But Whis was being dead serious, and he would tell Beerus that maybe we should avoid this one. It's better to leave him alone. Fighting him will only make him stronger, and it could bring unbalance to all the 12 universes. Beerus wouldn't care, as Beerus would then demand that they go to planet Earth right now. They would then leave, and they were celebrating Bulma's 38th birthday party, just like the original. Now they're at Bulma's house, or you can say it's the cruise ship, either one. They were enjoying her party, having a good time. Goku would then sense a weird pressure and he can sense the power, it's weird. As Goku's never sensed energy like this before. Mind you, Goku's never really fought anybody with God Ki before. He does have this power within him, he's just never felt it before. Goku's only been able to push himself to Super Saiyan 2 because he's never needed to go any further. He's never had somebody to push him, ever in his entire life. Other than Cell, but that is because Goku was very weakened because of the vice virus that was made against him in the original part two. Once when Beerus would arrive, he would instantly take note of Goku. Now Vegeta was terrified, because he remembers Beerus very vividly from when he would stomp on his father and he was then torturing him. He was afraid of Beerus. Beerus would then tell the Saiyan that who he was, and of course Goku thinks that's really cool. He's never knew that there was a destroyer, and he can sense Beerus and Whis' power, and he couldn't really feel it at first, but after taking a few moments to try and learn how to do it, he was actually able to do it. That goes to show you his potential is within him. Beerus takes note on how fast he was able to learn how to be able to see God energy. It's incredible. Whis would be a little bit nervous, as this could become a problem, but the Saiyan doesn't seem to have any evil intent in his heart, which is a big sigh of relief. But Beerus, on the other hand, is getting excited. Never met a mortal like this before, a being who can rival his power? He wants to definitely give this a try. But before they would do that, Beerus is really hungry, as the smell of the earth food entices him. Beerus just needs to give it a try first, he apologizes. Beerus would then go off and he'll begin eating the buffet that they have, and he was absolutely in heaven. Same with Whis, they are really enjoying themselves. Now Goku would eat first, as he wants to eat before fighting, he doesn't want to get hungry now. After that was good, they would then clear out of the way, away from Bulma's party, as they would then go to a wide open area in the plains of the planet. Now Vegeta, Piccolo, Raditz, Gohan, and the others followed, of course. They want to see what happens. Vegeta mainly. This is when Goku would then take a stance against Beerus. And Goku doesn't know Beerus' full power. Even Beerus is holding back massively, it's still way stronger than he even imagined. People seem to underestimate how strong Beerus actually is. I'm comparing Beerus' power level from the manga version, not the anime version. Because the manga version of Beerus is league stronger than the anime version from what we've seen. We haven't even seen his full power yet. Goku would then charge forward and throw a few punches at Beerus. 
which Beerus will surprisingly catch, and he would then smirk. The power behind his attacks is incredible. Now, how strong is this version of Goku? This version of Goku is fighting him in base form. Now remember, Goku is still holding back massively. Remember, he's never really had anybody to push himself before, ever. Goku, by this point, is a league stronger than he was, in the manga version, stronger than he was when he fought Gas and Granola in True Ultra Instinct. That's just to kind of gauge you guys on how strong Goku's actually become. And he's in base form. He hasn't even transformed yet, and that's a whole different ballgame. Once when Goku would then fight back and forth with Beerus, Goku was holding his own. Beerus was shocked with how strong Goku actually was. The mortal even has transformations that he knows of. He hasn't even tapped into it. The mortal has got ki, he can sense it, but he's not using it. It's so strange that he's using normal ki, but he's that strong. This is when Beerus would then tap into more of his Akai and destructive power. He would then throw it right at Goku. Goku would then grab it, and the power would overwhelm him at first. But then once when Goku finally gets a grasp of it, he would then harness that power. Beerus was shocked, as Goku would then look at his hand, and he would then have the purple destruction aura around him as well. Goku was able to tap into this power. As in my previous what ifs, Goku was born with God of Destruction energy before, he has that potential as well. So Beerus was utterly shocked. Goku then states that he wants to go into his full strength, but he doesn't want to destroy the planet. Whis then has the only option. It would then flap a little bit more higher up into space, and Whis would then use all of his power to make a massive shield all around them to encase them in case the whole universe gets destroyed. Now, Whis was sweating as he was even scared of what Goku's power is. Goku would begin powering up as Beerus was holding himself back in utter shock. His power level continues to rise as Goku would then burst into Super Saiyan, then Super Saiyan 2. Goku would then burst into Super Saiyan 3. As then even going forward, Goku would then turn into a Super Saiyan 4. Now, how did Goku learn this power? Remember, I have a what if before to where I have what if Goku was born in Super Saiyan 4. There's even what ifs to where Goku turned Super Saiyan 4 early. And yeah, that goes shows to show you. He could always turn into these forms. He just never had somebody to actually do it. And he was afraid he was going to destroy everything. Goku would then look at his power and he would then state that he's only tapped into it privately on his own. Here's that's what he means. Goku did something similar to Whis. He would basically entrap himself in his own energy and power up and see how strong he was initially, so no one could actually sense it, but he knew how strong he was. He had to try and grasp his power because he doesn't want to destroy everything. He would then tell Beerus that that Gaki thing is really interesting. It actually took him a second to actually figure it out, but he thinks he gets it. This is when Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan God, almost like it was natural to him. Because there's a what if I've done of what if Goku was naturally born with God Ki and was Yamoshi's descendant, and he was born in Super Saiyan God. But Goku already has this power within him already. But Goku would then go further. He would then tell Beerus he wants to see how high he can actually go. How far can he push his God energy? Goku would then begin pushing Super Saiyan God, almost evolving the form, having more sparkles, and his eyes would have a darker pupils around it. Goku would then push further as he would then calm the energy turning into a Super Saiyan, Rose. Now mind you, this is because Goku's naturally built with God Ki, so instead of blue, like how it originally was, because that's a mortal obtaining God Ki, Goku is not a full-on mortal. He does have God Ki. But you can go back and forth of whether it's blue or Rose, that's up to you guys, but in my opinion, Goku has turned Rose in the what ifs, so I'm gonna keep it a little bit more realistic-ish, but Goku does turn into Rose instead of blue. This was shocking Beerus, as his power level is not stopping. It is continuing to rise, and Whis was literally sweating as it's rising to levels he's never imagined. Goku by this point is already far stronger than most of the Gods of Destruction. Now he's already soon, already about to surpass Beerus immensely. This is when Goku would then begin pushing, as he wants Beerus to go into his full power. Beerus would then do so, tapping into all of his destruction abilities, even Ultra Ego and so forward. Beerus would then bulk up a little bit in size, going to his absolute maximum. Now the shield was barely holding, and they would then continue fighting. Goku would then use Ultra Ego, having a similar form to Vegeta's power, but Goku states that eh, it doesn't really like it that much. And how is this possible? Goku has max potential. He's fighting somebody that can grant him all the power that he has within him. He has all this power, he's just never had somebody to actually push him to unlock it. 
but Goku would begin battling Beerus, trading blows back and forth. His shield was already cracking. Unfortunately, Beerus is clearly outmatched. Goku's power level has skyrocketed too high, and he can't keep up. With Goku's training for the past almost 10 years, on top of the fact that he's now training and fighting Beerus, going really into his inner potential, unfortunately Beerus has zero chance of beating Goku. Once when Goku would then power up fully, he would overpower Beerus and even defeat him, knocking the Supreme God out old. Whis was shocked, as his shield would have already broken. Whis was utterly shocked at Goku's power, and Goku would be really impressed by Beerus' strength, but he still felt bored. But he's not going to take it any more further. Beerus would then wake up, and he was shocked that he was defeated so easily. Beerus would then shake the Saiyan's hand and congratulate him. Whis would try offering him a job as a god of destruction. Of course, Goku would quickly decline. He's not a destroyer. So, would Goku battle Whis? I don't think so, because Goku doesn't know that Whis is Beerus' teacher. He would be interested in fighting him, but they're going to keep it for right now because they don't want to destroy the whole universe. And Whis would make an excuse, and he would actually say, Oh, fortunately, I can't make another shield like that. I used a lot of my power. Which Goku would understand, and he had a lot of fun. He's never actually pushed himself that far in years. So this is when they would then all go back down, and they would then enjoy a massive feat, all having a fantastic time. This time around, Majin Buu never ruined it with the pudding, and even if he did, Goku would have stopped Beerus. So Beerus would then tell the Saiyan that he's very impressed by his power, and if he ever wants to try and learn to control it more, maybe his teacher can help him. Or would he actually say that? I don't think Beerus would even offer Goku to show up to his planet. Whis would not be interested in training a monster like that. Think about it. Goku is so strong that he can surpass Whis and even the Grand Priest no later on. This goes to show you how strong Goku is actually becoming. Though he's not on the levels of Grand Priest yet, the Grand Priest can slap Goku around in reality. But Goku can definitely keep up with an Angel level currently at his maximum strength. Now, Goku does have Ultra Instinct within him, but he's never seen it before. He's never really felt it or had to use it. So we'll get into that one later. Now, the people that would actually go to go train is actually Vegeta and Raditz. Those two would actually leave to go train on Beerus' world. So Raditz would take over Goku's spot alongside Vegeta. Those two have the bigger you know, rivals together as Vegeta sees that he can't surpass Kakarot. There's just no way. Kakarot's not a normal Saiyan. But Raditz is a low-class scum. So Raditz has kind of taken over Goku's place from the original show. Goku's just like a Saitama of the show, he's just a monster. But they understand that, and they're happy that he's on their side. So Raditz and Vegeta would begin their training for over two plus years, training to learn God Energy. Now, Goku would show up, and how is this possible? Well, that's because Goku, again, can use the Kai Kai ability. Now hold on, Nature Dragon, how is this possible? Goku saw the Supreme Kai using it, and in my what ifs, I have had Goku use the Kai Kai ability initially, and he had God Energy, Goku was able to learn it. But once when Goku sees something for the first time, he can learn how to do it. And even if Goku didn't, Goku's so strong that he could probably use his speed to get to Beerus' world. If he can't do that, then he would ask Whis to be brought over there and Raditz and them, and Whis would understand and bring him. Goku just wouldn't really want to train. He might train with maybe Vegeta and Raditz for a little while, but he would kind of do his own thing. Now, Whis was trying to avoid Goku at all costs, as he doesn't want to fight him, not at all. Though, Whis does have an excitement, but he's afraid of Goku. He doesn't want to fight him because he's afraid of how strong the Saiyan could become. Though he is an angel, and he's beyond all the gods of destruction put together, it doesn't matter. That being is so dangerous, he might need to speak to his father about it. Now, alongside with Raditz and Vegeta, they would then continue their training. Now, they would learn God Key, learning Super Saiyan God. Now, they would learn to turn into a Super Saiyan Blue, unlocking their own God power. And we know that Gohan would not have went, because true, he's training more and more than he originally would. And Piccolo is already really strong. He's already mastered his orange form ability and pushing it even more. Gohan around this time, remember, Adele will still be pregnant with Pan, so Gohan would not leave. He wants to take care of his child. That's why Gohan's not leaving. He's going to stay on Earth with Piccolo to protect it if anything happens, though. But Gohan's not getting rusty or anything. Now, what's when Frieza would then fully revive? Frieza would train a little bit differently this time. Now, Frieza knows that three months of training is not going to surpass that monster that he faced. He knows this. So Frieza will kind of go on his own journey to continue training 
for probably over an extra part of the year. So instead of training there for two years, it'll be three to four years they would begin training alongside Raditz and Vegeta. So they would have more time to continue mastering Super Saiyan Blue as the time went on. Now Frieza on his Savage, he would then find a Saiyan named Broly. Now remember, why is this possible? Because Frieza never really worked on the Empire. He only trained for three to four months, and then he instantly headed to Earth. He didn't really care about expanding his empire or rebuilding it. Now, chi Lai and Lemma would actually find Broly quicker than the original by years. Finding Broly in Paragus, Frieza would then take Broly under his wing. Now, Frieza can see that this Saiyan has so much untapped battle power, it's absurd. Now, Frieza knows to be very careful. He needs to become stronger than he's ever become stronger before, if that makes sense. He would then find the Room of Spirit and Time. Frieza found this in the original, in the original manga version with Gas and Granola. He found his own kind of dimensional room of spirit and time. He trained in there for 10 years. So, this is when Frieza would then take over 10 years, which is 10 days, to continue training. Now, Frieza would then be able to unlock his Black Frieza form, being as strong as he was in the original manga which is still absurdly strong and we haven't seen the limit of it. I don't think he's stronger than Gods of Destruction, but I definitely think he's there. But Frieza's way stronger. Frieza would then take Broly and unfortunately Paragus, but we'll get into that later. Frieza would then take Paragus and Broly and this is when Frieza began training Broly for another five years. So Frieza's been training for 15 years, by the way. They take Broly in for five years and which is five days on the outside. And this is when Paragus began aging a lot, because remember, he's a lot older. But now Broly's battle power was immense. So Frieza was way far ahead of him by now, so Broly couldn't catch up to him. Broly has grown massively in strength. Now Broly was able to learn the Akari state and learn how to control it. Frieza knows that he needs to turn into a Super Saiyan, but he doesn't know how. So he would then figure out a way. He would then fight Broly and make him give into rage, make him get way strong, but it would also blind Broly. Frieza would then quote-unquote shoot Paragus, saying that Broly, look what you did. You accidentally killed him. This would then make Broly transform into a Super Saiyan, and then even the full power Super Saiyan. His power would already rival that of the Beerus' level far beyond this by now, and he would actually give Frieza a really tough fight. Frieza was shocked at his rate of growth. Now, after this, Broly would then lose, they would then continue training, and by this point, they would then all step out. Now that Frieza and Broly are more prepared than anything, they're now ready to go fight the Saiyans. Now, they would then head to planet Earth. Now, mind you, Frieza by this point has had a few years to build up his army, so he would have hundreds of thousands of members. Now, Sheet Lai and Lemma would then hang out with Broly a lot, and Broly, true, he's been taught by Frieza in a bad way. Broly's still very primitive, that's not gonna change. While he has had five years, Frieza's kinda taught him bad things and everything else, but chi and Lemma would be able to pull Broly back because they're his first friends and he really likes them. So, but Broly would still follow Frieza as he kind of looks at Frieza like another father figure in a way. Frieza's a master manipulator. He would definitely do something like that. So this is when they would all head to planet Earth. Now the Resurrection F saga would then begin. It's a few years late, but it has started. Now Raditz and Vegeta would still continue their training. Goku would then sense a massive power nearby Earth. He would then grab onto his friends, Beerus and Whis would follow because they want to see this, and they would then travel to Earth. Now Frieza and Broly have arrived with hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Now Piccolo and Gohan were easily going through everybody, and this is when Gohan would then begin fighting Broly. Now Broly was far too strong for Gohan, easily overpowering the Saiyan. Piccolo in his orange form easily was overpowered by base form Broly. Fortunately, they did not have a say in the matter. Fortunately, this is when Goku and the others would then arrive. Now, this is when Raditz and Vegeta would then step up, both of them turning into Super Saiyan Blues, and they would then battle Broly. Now, mind you here, Broly is absurdly strong. Unfortunately, they would have no chance with Broly, easily being defeated. Now, this is when Goku would then help them, which Vegeta would never accept help, but what other choice do they have? Goku, during this year, by the way, was not just on Beerus' world. He learned how to use the Kai Kai ability. Goku's been traveling. He traveled to the realm of the Kais again. He even traveled to the other world, meaning King Yama, 
Pycon, and tons of other people, Goku's been learning a lot. Now this is when Goku would then show Raditz and Vegeta how to do something. This is when Goku would then give his power to Raditz and Vegeta, making them absurdly strong. Now this nearly destroyed them at the power that he gave them, but this would then give them a chance. As Goku doesn't indirectly want to fight Broly head on, but he wants them to try and fight in case he's not there, because you never know anything could happen to him. Now this is when Raditz and Vegeta, now way stronger, it would impress even Beerus at how strong they are. Now Broly by this point is around Beerus' level, so Raditz and Vegeta are near there, but not fully. They have a little bit ways to go. If they would have fought Broly together, they could hold their own a little bit. Now mind you, because Raditz and Vegeta are way stronger than the original, they are fighting a way stronger version of Goku, and he gave them a little bit of his power to help boost them up, so they gotten a lot stronger. This is when Goku would then show them what they have learned, though Vegeta absolutely despises this. He doesn't have a choice, because if he doesn't, his darling Bulma and them will die, so he would then do the fusion dance. Goku learned this in the other world from Metamorians, because Goku would explore around the universe using the Kai Kai ability. Why wouldn't he? He would then travel to Supreme Kai, then Supreme Kai would then tell him about the other world. He would then go there and meet a bunch of people. So why wouldn't Goku not learn this ability? It wouldn't make a lot of sense why he wouldn't. So this is when Vegeta and Raditz would then do the fusion dance, becoming Rajita, Veggie Raditz. Let me know in the comments down below what you would call a fusion between Raditz and Vegeta into a Gogeta-like character using the Metamorian fusion dance. Let me know down below if you made it this far. They would then transform into Super Saiyan Blue and they would begin fighting Broly. Now Broly would be in his full power Super Saiyan form and he kind of lost himself to rage. Now the fusion would actually be able to match Broly, being able to keep up with them and actually overpower him initially. As they were able to continue pushing their power, they would then tap into Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Now they would overpower Broly initially, Broly was starting to catch up. Fortunately, the power that they held over time the fusion, it overtaxed it. So they would defuse, and Broly was still pretty battle damaged, it was a good fight, but the timer ruined them and they were knocked down. Frieza would then begin laughing, as then before they were killed, this is when we're going to see Goku fly in, delivering to Broly what he did to Raccoon in the original, a powerful elbow to his stomach, which would then make him fall over and be defeated. Now Goku did not kill Broly, as he sees that Broly's not evil, he's just very immature and misguided, he is pure hearted. He would then glare at Frieza, telling him that you're just a beast, you manipulated this monster into what you wanted. Frieza would then be waiting for this moment. As Frieza would then transform into his Black Frieza form, Frieza made some enhancements to it as well, making himself very strong. Frieza definitely by this point is stronger than Beerus, and Beerus can see that and he's kind of sweating a little bit as he hopes that Goku can beat him. But Beerus has been training himself as well, so Beerus is not a pushover anymore. He, remember how Beerus would sleep for tens of thousands of years, you know, not really train? He's now actually training, training with Whis, trying to go stronger. But cutting back forward to Goku, he would then battle Frieza. And Goku would then go into Super Saiyan, continuing to battle him. This is when Goku would then push himself and be overkill. He would then jump into Super Saiyan God and battle Frieza head on. He would then overpower Frieza. As Frieza has no chance against this version of Goku, Goku would easily overpower Black Frieza, knocking him out of his form. Goku would then hold his hand out right in front of Frieza. He would then tell him that you did not deserve to be kept alive. Now Goku's given Frieza chances to change, but he never has. Now this is when Goku would then tell him Hakai, and Frieza would be completely wiped out from existence. No soul, no nothing. This is when chi -Lai and Lemma would then help Broly up, as Goku can see the raw potential that Broly has. This is when Broly would then join them, with chi -Lai and Lemma coming along with Raditz and Vegeta, all going back to Beerus' world where Goku would actually train Broly personally. Helping Broly to fully control the rage power that he had, Frieza is not the best teacher now, mind you, but Goku is. So Goku would help Broly learn to control it, even helping Broly unlock God Key, which was already stronger than Raditz and Vegeta. Now Raditz and Vegeta are continuing to train. This is when we are going to cut forward. Would the Goku Black arc happen? Yes, it would. Now I know some people want some massive changes to the Goku Black arc, and you want, oh, this is a different version of Goku. Now, we did do this for the future arc, 
Now, would this be the same version of Goku Black? It's not, because remember Zamasu took over another version of Goku from a different timeline. It's a very confusing concept. So it would be the same version of Goku Black. Zamasu is still immortal from the Super Dragon Balls, but it's still different. So if Goku Black does appear and Trunks does show up, this is the future Trunks, he would then easily be able to handle Goku Black. Because of the fact that Goku and Vegeta are there, they would easily handle Goku Black and Zamasu. There's way, the too, too many powerful beings. And I could dive into it, but it would become a 30 minute plus long video, aka an hour long. But unfortunately, the Goku Black arc would still happen similar. It just would not be as long. Once when Goku Black first actually appeared, he would actually be killed. And if Zamasu even showed up with immortality, but that's because Goku Black manipulated him in the end, Goku would have still Hakai'd him and defeated him. Now, we obviously know that, of course, original, Zamasu would have still showed up and, you know, became the pillar of the universe. Goku would still use the Zeno button because we did gloss over the Universe 6 arc. That would happen similar. Goku would not be in it. Goku would kind of be like the Manaka staying out of the way. Raditz and Vegeta and the others would then step in. And they would easily overpower everybody. It's very powerful, but not against these guys. And then Vegeta would still take a liking to Kaba, teaching him what it means to be a Saiyan warrior. And they would have easily win. Beerus would still use the Dragon Balls to wish Chompa his planet back. And this is also when Zeno would then appear. Now, with Zeno appearing, Zeno senses how strong Goku actually is. Zeno senses something within him. He senses omnipotence, uh, energy like his. It really intrigues Zeno, and he wants to see Goku again soon. Now, Dash is to explain how Goku gets the Zeno button because he becomes best friends with him. That would happen the same. Once when Grand Priest actually meets Goku, he would then be scared of Goku's power. No mortal should be that strong. It almost insulted him in a way. Zeno loves Goku, obviously, as Zeno is very childish. Now, Zeno knows that Goku does not have the omnipotence fully, but Zeno is too childish that we know of to really care. Now, this is when going past the Goku Black arc, we would then, of course, dive into the Broly arc, the Tournament of Power. Now, the Tournament of Power, I believe, would still happen, and Universe 7 is going to win. Even if Goku was, can't, was not allowed to go in by the Grand Priest, to be fair, Goku would just sit back and watch because everybody else can handle it. Raditz... Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta are way strong enough by this point. And they have somebody else. They have a freaking monster called Broly who would weaselly overpower Jiren and defeat him. People seem to forget just how strong Universe 7 has become. Now, by this point, Gohan would have continued pushing his power, going stronger and stronger. Gohan's potential is busted. Broly's strong enough, as is. Vegeta and Raditz have Super Saiyan Blue Evolution on their own. They are way too strong. So even the likes of Jiren, he would have been overrun. Broly would have absolutely destroyed Jiren in their fight. Even if he went to his limit breaking mode, it wouldn't matter. Fortunately, Jiren would lose. So all the universes would be destroyed. Now Gohan would still be the team leader. So since they won, Gohan would be granted the wish and Gohan would then wish for all the universes back just like before. Now, if Goku was in the tournament of power, which I don't see why he wouldn't be, all the other universes knew that they're screwed. They can sense how strong Goku was. Now, they probably would have all voted and, the, and then Zeno would have said that Goku can't enter. Even if Goku wasn't there, he would have just slapped around everybody. Even if Kale and Khalifa showed up, hit attack, even if the entire other 12 universes all jumped on Goku at the same time. But Jiren, Dive Destruction, like, like at the Aniraza, the strongest versions, Kefla, hit using his time skip. Goku would annihilate everybody in his way. Knocking them out one by one like a pinball machine. It would not even be a competition. So... Goku would just stay out of the way this time, and he was really proud about how strong his friends are becoming. He's truly amazed. Cutting forward, we are then going to dive into the Broly movie, which is not happening, since Frieza already kind of did this originally. So, Broly movie, we're glossing over that. But what about Dragon Ball Superhero? Now, with Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie, Gohan and Piccolo could still be the main leaders. It's just that Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz will be on Beerus' world. Now, if Cell Max was brought back, from what we originally know, from Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, that could be the only potential problem. Now, Gohan here has gotten a lot of growth. Now, what I mean by this, Gohan knew that he needed to grow stronger. So, Gohan actually went to the Supreme Kai with Goku's help to have his latent potential unlocked, 
but Gohan would still get Mystic just like before. Now, this is when Gohan and Piccolo would then team up to battle the Gammas. The Gammas are absurdly strong, by the way, but Gohan and Piccolo are way stronger than they originally were, especially with Gohan using Mystic, and he would then be able to learn the Beast form, having a lot of rage, he would easily defeat them. Orange Piccolo would defeat them as well. Now, perfected Cell Max would be a problem, since he's grown much stronger, being able to basically harness more power, this is when Gohan and Piccolo might have problems. Now Goku would sense this, and he would then go fight Perfected Cell Max, or would he? This is when I think that Broly would showcase his power and fight Perfected Cell Max, as now Perfected Cell Max from the, of course, the part before, he was around the levels of Super Saiyan Blue Goku when he fought Frieza. Now Perfected Cell Max here is far stronger than that, easily eclipsing God Destruction levels of power for sure. So, Broly would have a perfect opponent to fight against. Now, Broly has learned to control his legendary Super Saiyan power, being able to take harness of it and actually think clearly. Now, the only problem is, is Broly will start to get overpowered because, perfected Cell Max here, he is way too intelligent for Broly. Now, this is when Raditz and Vegeta would then do the fusion dance again, as they learned to use it. With Blue Evolution, they would then battle Cell Max, but unfortunately, Perfected Cell Max, I think, would still win because he would still be too strong. Now, this is when Gohan would then be meeting up with Goku, and Goku would then step in, and he would easily defeat Cell Max by himself. Now, after Cell Max was defeated, what about the Granola and Gas Arc? Well, the Gas Arc would never happen because they use Granola to get stronger, blah, 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 get the Dragon Balls. That would never happen. What about Moro? Now, the thing with Moro is the fact that, true, he could take energy. But once when he tries to take Goku's power, he would literally destroy himself and implode. Goku has omni Key power within him, and God of Destruction, and Angel. We know that the Angel power nearly killed him, if you guys remember, so imagine having that plus way more. He has no chance. He would have, he would have died. So, Moro would try to take Goku's energy, he ate it, and he would then probably get a temporary massive power up. But then he would then literally explode and disintegrate himself. It'll be the same thing with Granola. If he tries wishing to become the strongest, which he in reality, why would he need to? Frieza's dead. So if Frieza's dead, he could try getting revenge on the Saiyans because they were with Frieza. So if he still made the wish, he would have died. Because Goku's so strong and he's still immortal in a way. Even if he wasn't, Broly, for instance. Fortunately, Granola would have died. He would have aged way too quickly and died. Gas would have tried making the same wish. He would have died the same way. And unfortunately, there is no Black Frieza arc because Black Frieza was killed. But anyway, that is it for this series, you guys. Thank y'all for watching. I know I kind of glossed over and ran over some of the other arcs, but unfortunately, none of them would really change massively. The only thing that would really be a challenge would be Perfected Cell Max. But anyway, thank you all so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers, and I'll talk to you all later.